Hey guys, Water 24 here from MondayMorningMTG.com, and today I have the 2014 Corset Fat Pack, or the M14 Fat Pack, which comes with a poster on the outside, a 300 card box for storing cards, two small deck boxes, a spin down life counter, a uh, guide of the books, or not of the books, of the cards inside, and a, a book with the list of cards inside and nine booster packs, plus an 80 card land pack. Basic land, specifically. So let's go ahead, open this up, and see what we get. And I believe two or three times I have been able to call a card out before I even open the pack. Uh, two of them, you can see, one of them is in one of the gate crash boxes, where I declare a... Uh, Godless Shrine before I actually get it, and another time was the uh, Cold Snap Booster Pack I opened where I called a particular card, I believe it was a rare legend I wanted, and I called that and got it. And I think I did the same thing in an Innistrad pack. I was talking about one card and I opened a foil one, so that one I haven't put up yet. That, that was an Innistrad box I bought a couple months ago. I may put that up eventually. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so first things first. Poster. A very long poster of Chandra there. Now, of course, this goes with my collection of other posters from Fat Packs. So don't just throw the sleeve away. Actually open it up, take the glue off, and you have yourself a nice little poster you can hang up on a wall. When I have a dorm in college, I like to hang those up. I have like an entire wall filled with them. I keep adding and adding and adding. Anyway, so we have those. Cardboard, kind of thick cardboard. It's nice cardboard. Um, deck boxes, basic land pack plus four boosters. Five boosters, a how to play guide, and... Ah, oh, we have the uh, sp the red spin down here, and it's got M14 labeled on it. We have the book, which has the visual dictionary of what is in here. And then, of course, we have the 300 card box. And that's a nice box with Chandra on the side, and I don't know, I like the art for 2014 stuff. M13 was okay with the Nikol Bolas horns and everything, but I don't know. M14 I like a little bit better, especially some of the basic lands, too, because some of the basic lands are just, like, beautiful. It'd look really cool if they made it full art Zendikar style, but some of these are, like, really amazing-looking art for land. But I digress. Um, let me just open up this plastic, take some stuff out. Like, I'm going to take that out. I don't need that. Um, I opened this up in the Deck Builders Toolkit. It's just it's just how to play Magic. And we don't... I don't need that, personally. The deck boxes. I saw one person uh, open a fat pack at one of the stores near where I am. Actually, the store that is closest to where I am. One of them, Chandra, on the back of her uh, new Planeswalker art. And that is box number one. And the other one, box number two. Yes, I like quickly folding the boxes. I don't know, it's, it's nice. You get two little 60-card deck boxes. You can't put them in with sleeves, but you can put 60 to 75 cards in here. The other one is Grook, Collar of Beasts, of which I have two just from pre-releases and release day sealed tournaments. Anyway, Basic Land, I'm not going to open this. Because, well, it's basic land. I mean, you could guess proportions of how many of what you're going to have in there. So 80, divide that by 5, you have 16. So you, theoretically, you should have 4 of each art, since there are 4 of each type. But sometimes that doesn't happen, because sometimes it starts on, like, a different one. Sometimes it'll, like, double up, and you'll have, like, more of 3 than less of 2 of them. And different stuff like that. Anyway, close-up of the spin-down. Very nice one there. 
Uh, it's, it's easy to read. I like it. I'm going to go with the four that came with the land first. Now, of course, I would love to have a foil mythic. Like, I don't know, a, uh, hmm, foil Colonian Hydra would actually be nice. Or foil Archangel of Thune, but, well, that's pushing my luck there. So we'll just go to the back. A nothing card, a plains, and we have a bug brew witch. One black and three for a one three, and you can pay two to search your library for a card named Festering Newt or Bubbling Cauldron and put it on the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. Okay, that's that's okay. We have Diabolic Tutor as one uncommon, Rod of Ruin as the next, and Encroaching Wastes as the other one. And then we just have Dragon Hatchling, Altar's Reap, Trained Condor, Glade Cover Scout, Celestial Flare, Vile Rebirth, Lightning Talons, Cyclops Tyrant, Corpse Hauler, and Capuchin Knight. So that's one pack. We're still hoping for that Foil Clonian Hydra. Whether it'll happen or not is completely different. I mean, either way, I'd be happy if I had one. Actually, you know what? I have two Grooks of the Collar of the Beast variety. I would love to have a Chandra Pyromaster. keep wanting to say Pyromancer because it just seems appropriate. Another Nothing card. A Forest and a Domestication. Second one of these I have. Double Blue and two. And you can Enchant Creature. You control the Enchanted Creature. And at the beginning of your end step, if Enchanted Creature's power is four or greater, sacrifice Domestication. I'll serve the people that play Doran the Siege Tower right when they play EDH. Young Pyromancer. See, that's that's the whole Mancer Master thing. Opportunity. Mana Weft Sliver are the uncommons. We have a Shrivel, Blur Sliver, Trained Condor, Advocate of the Beast, Celestial Flare, Root Walla, Nefalia Sea Kite. Corpse Holler, Marauding Mallhorn, and Claustrophobia. Yeah, no Mythics yet. A couple of rares. Eh. And they're okay, I guess. I mean, I probably wouldn't be using Bog Brew Witch in a deck. That might actually be something I would build and then sell on eBay. As a, hey, you can try this. It may be interesting. Okay, so. Zombie. Mountain, and the rare is actually a foil battle sliver. I don't know if you can see the shininess of it. Let me... I don't know if I can... I can't really trigger the shininess of it very well. But that is a foil battle sliver, because battle sliver is uncommon. And it is a 3-3 three, three for a red and 4. And all slivers that I control get plus 2, plus 0. We have indestructibility as the rare... A white and three for enchant permanent. Enchanted permanent has indestructible, which means that effects that say destroy don't destroy that permanent. A creature with indestructible can't be destroyed by damage. Yay. Air servant. Opportunity. I'm, that's gonna be the myth, that's gonna be the uncommon I get I guess. And colonian tusker, which would be nice to replace my. Uh uh oh. The um, double green uncommon from uh, Dark Ascension. The Strangler Root Geist. There we go. Deadly Recluse. Pacifism. Altar's Reap. Liturgy of Blood. Merfolk Spy. Giant Spider. Marauding Mulhorn. Shadowborn Apostle and Sentinel Sliver as the commons. Last pack from the one with the uh, basic land attached to it. Ah, uh, cool time ab. I still have one from uh, Portal Second Age. That was back in the late 90s. But first, we're going to go in the back. It's nothing card. We got a Swamp. And we have a Scavenging Ooze. What, that's up to like 15, 20 now? I think it's at 20 now. 
So it's a green and one for a 2 2. And you pay a green to exile target card from a graveyard. If it has a creature card, put a plus one, plus one, or if it was a creature card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Scavenging Ooze, and you gain one life. That one's a nice one for EDH. I know that was in one of the uh, Commander EDH decks from, 20, from summer of 2011. Then we have Vial of Poison, a Quarter's Shield, and Staff of the Wild Magus in here as the uncommons. Commons are Griffin Sentinel, Ground Shaker Sliver, Giant Spider, yeah. Demolish, Show of Valor, Dark Favor, Claustrophobia, Verdant Haven, Soul Mender, and Time Ebb. Okay, so we have a $20 card out of this so far. Not bad, not bad. I mean, what, it was $40 fat pack. All fat packs are. Tip well, when they come out, they are. There you go. That's an idea. If you want and have the money to invest in magic stuff, buy fat packs. Don't open them and sell some two or three years later after they came out. Because then you can sell a $40 fat pack for 80 or 100 depending what was in it. And people will pay for that on eBay. Moving on. A nothing card. A planes. My favorite planes art so far of the of M14. And then we have Haunted Plate Mail. Four colorless mana to, for equipped creature to get plus four plus four. Equip okay. You pay zero for until end of turn, it becomes a four four spirit artifact creature that's no longer on equipment. Activate this ability only if you control no creatures. And equip is four. Air Servant, Flesh Pulper Giant, and Bubbling Cauldron are the uncommons. The commons are Coral Merfolk, Shrivel, Elvish Mystic, Fortify, Pacifism, Blur Sliver, Lava Axe, Rumbling Baloth, Capuchin Knight, and Trollhide, which Trollhide is a lot better than you would have thought, as evidenced by the pre-release where I got my butt kicked by someone with Trollhide. Actually, it was a stalemate. Well, no. Technically, I won because he ran out of cards before I did. I had 41 cards. We went to the brutal end. Okay. A nothing card. Shoot. I want tokens. Forest. Darksteel Forge, second one of M14 now. Alright. For nine colorless mana, this is an artifact that says artifacts you control have indestructible, which means this is indestructible, which means all artifacts you have are indestructible. Um, that's good if you're playing with artifacts, but there aren't that many in this set in comparison to Mirrodin and the Scars of Mirrodin block when that would have been more appropriate. Staff of the Mind Magus, Phantom Warrior, and Opportunity of the Uncommons. So with Darksteel Forge, we have to assume that there will be more artifacts found in Theros block, which would be Theros, Born of the Gods, and Journey into Nyx, because if they have that, and this is only legal for a year, in Standard specifically, then that would be, be the purpose, unless they wanted to infuse more of those into the environment for... EDH slash Commander, Modern, etc. Anyway, moving on. Commons are Canyon Minotaur, Tome Scour, Spore Mound, Disperse, Chandra's Outrage, Armored Cancrix, Suntail Hawk, Corpse Hauler, Marauding Malhorn, and Claustrophobia. Claustrophobia and that uh, other blue spell, I don't remember what it's called. I mean, the art just, like, freaks the hell out of me. I mean, not really, but it's like something I don't want to look at. Where I'd probably go mad if you forced me to look at that card for like five minutes straight. So, another reason I don't like p telling people where I am or what magic stores I go to or anything, because 
now you guys know that I don't like looking at that art, and you can probably torture me by making me look at it. I don't even know why I said that. I, I should just stop talking. Uh, nothing card. Okay, this is... This is getting kind of kind of annoying with the no token thing. Okay, we have a mountain. Imposing sovereign. One white and one for two one. Creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. That's a really good card if you're playing anything with white and humans. Because anything with haste can't attack. Uncommons are Wall of Frost. Staff of the Wild Magus. Seems to be the popular one so far. And Shiv's Embrace. Okay, good enough. Griffin Sentinel, Canyon Minotaur, Disperse, Charging Griffin, Ring Flesh, Brindle Boar, Verdant Haven, Soul Mender, Time Ebb, and Shadowborn Apostle are the commons. The more Shadowborn Apostles I get, the more awesome of a deck I could build with something like Human Reanimator. Because that's the, that's the one currently in standard that you can have as many of them as you want in your deck. So if you really wanted, you could have, like, oh, I don't know, uh, like 42 or 44 of them and just make everything else um, swamps. I wouldn't recommend that, but you could do that. Another... Another one of these, seriously, wow. Island, the rare is Chandra's Phoenix, double red and one, for a 2-2 two, two with flying, haste, and whenever an opponent is dealt damage by a red and center sorcery spell you control, or by a red planeswalker you control, return Chandra's Phoenix from your graveyard to your hand. That is a pretty sweet. Young Pyromancer, Blessing, and Woodborne Behemoth are the uncommons. Commons are Liturg Liturgy of Blood. Oh, yeah, I spun things around, so that was actually upright in the pack initially. Mind Rot. Divine Favor. Goblin Shortcutter. Seacoast Drake. Predatory Sliver. Rumbling Bailoth. Pay No Heed. Capuchin Knight, and Lay of the Land as the commons. One pack left. I hope this is a mythic rare. And at this time, while I'm opening this, I would like to apologize for rambling. I probably should have a podcast at some point because rambling is something I do when talking about magic because I'm very opinionated about magic. Okay, that's, that's ridiculous. We have a Plains... A foil Tidebinder Mage, which is double blue for a 2-2. Two, two. And when it enters the battlefield, tap target red or green creature in opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step for as long as you control Tidebinder Mage. And this is a rare. So a rare mythic in the pack is a rare Grim Return, of which is black and two. It's an instant. Choose target creature card in a graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. Put that card onto the battlefield under your control. Uncommons are Wall of Frost, St Staff of the Wild Magus, and Shiv's Embrace. Deja Vu? Yeah, I'm, I think that... Didn't, didn't that happen already? Where I got those exact uncommons and... Anyway... I mean, I'm sure that happens. They cut them from a sheet. They have a finite number. It's possible. Canyon Minotaur, Wild Guess, Cancel, Lava Axe, Siege Mastodon, Marauding Mallhorn, Shadowborn Apostle, Sentinel Sliver, and Frost Breath are commons in this pack. Okay, so there you have it. The nine booster packs of the fat pack that I obtained... Then we have, what it like it, it gives you a deck to build using each color's planeswalker. It explains about stuff, and what I believe there's like oh yeah the best cards of the set what they think is the best. Chandra Pyromaster as number one. No Archangel of Thune goes as number one. 
Uh, Colonian Hydra, that would probably be like number two. Scavenging Ooze, maybe three. Because a lot of these are like really awesome stuff that can do stuff. Mutavolt, that would be up there, but that's five. See, I mean, they just put in here like some of the best stuff that they think would be like awesome. It's typically the new Planeswalkers of the set and like the best mythics. I don't know, there, I, I'd make different choices if I was the one choosing this. Like, Predatory Sliver is a common number 10 slot. And Battle Sliver is an uncommon on number 4 slot. I'd probably change that. There'd probably be more better mythics and better rares up there than commons and uncommons. But, I mean, take it or leave it. That's just my opinion on that one. And you have the whole visual dictionary here. Checklist of all the cards. Oh, oh yeah, they do still have a checklist. Where you can check for the premium ones, which are the squares, or the circles that are the regulars, or however you want to do that. If you want to keep track of your collection, that is. I used to have a spreadsheet for that, now I don't. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the fat pack. Um, I have two more booster boxes. Actually, no, not two more booster boxes. I have two booster boxes to open. I've already opened the Deck Builders Toolkit. I did forget to mention, no intro packs. Probably should have said that a while ago in the videos. No intro packs because I found all that was like really valuable is the two booster packs and the foil rare. The rest of it I could get out of boosters easily. So, I mean, I don't really need the intro packs. At 60 I didn't have to spend. 60 I can spend on something else. Like some older packs for you guys or something, but I don't know. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and I gotta go work on more videos.